Chapter 23 is over drug therapy for seizures. It's a pretty short chapter, but there are quite a few drugs to go over in it. So first let's talk about seizures. A seizure results from excessive or disordered, or disorganized electrical activity in the brain. A seizure disorder is someone that has repeated seizures. Sometimes we call this epilepsy. So when the brain works normally, electrical impulses are organized. They help the brain communicate with the rest of the body. Abnormal electrical impulses are when the nerve cells fire more rapidly and with less control can lead to seizures. Um, there is a table on um, page 422 that lists the common um, causes of seizures and the characteristics of each cause. They can happen related to a brain injury, degenerative disorders like dementia. They can be genetic or result from problems like hypoxia at birth. They can happen related to a stroke, an infection in the nervous system like meningitis or encephalitis, from metabolic abnormalities like electrolyte imbalances, diabetes complications, or drug and alcohol use and withdrawal. They can be related to tumors, or they can have no known cause. We call that idiopathic. There's also a box on 422 that lists risk factors for seizures. These are things that put people more at risk for having seizures. Signs and symptoms of a seizure might vary widely, ranging from staring off into space to total loss of consciousness and violent jerky movements. The type of seizure depends on where in the brain it's happening, the cause of the seizure, and the person's response. Some people feel a sensation like a smell, vision, sound, or taste that happens before each seizure. We call this an aura. So the cycle of a seizure is the aura, the seizure, and then the post-ictal phase. That post-ictal phase after the seizure is when the person is no longer seizing, but they might be confused or lethargic or have decreased responsiveness. Most seizures don't last more than a few seconds. Any seizure that lasts from five to 30 minutes or a series of repeated seizures with no post-ictal period is considered status epilepticus. This is life-threatening and we have to protect the airway, give oxygen, get an IV, and give diazepam or Valium as soon as possible to reverse it. So seizures are divided into two different categories. Generalized seizures affect most or all of the brain. This category includes tonic-clonic or grand mal seizures that last two to five minutes. The patient's body gets stiff and rigid and they lose consciousness. <clears throat> Clonic seizures are when the patient kind of thrashes. Um, their muscles contract and relax. This is what a lot of people, or this is when a lot of people might bite their tongue, which is why you never put your fingers in their mouth, or they might have an incontinent episode. Tonic seizures are when the body tightens up, they lose consciousness, they'll have signs and symptoms like tachycardia, sweating, flushing, incontinence, their pupils dilate. These last for 30 seconds to several minutes. After these, the person is going to be very tired and the post-ictal period can last up to hours after. And absent seizures or petite mal seizures, these are more common in kids. They're brief, only a few seconds, with a loss of consciousness that actually just looks like a blank stare. We diagnose this a lot in school-age kids when the teachers complain that the kid's daydreaming or not paying attention in class. After the seizure, the child will go back to normal immediately. There's no post-ictal phase here. Myoclonic seizures look like a brief jerking or stiffening in the arms and legs that only lasts a few seconds. And atonic seizures look like a sudden loss of muscle tone for a few seconds. So the person will be flaccid or like a lymph noodle. <clears throat> These do usually have a postictal phase. Um, the next classification is partial seizures, also known as focal or local seizures. There are simple partial, seizure, partial seizures when the patient uh, remains conscious. They might have some unusual movement or changes in an extremity, and they typically have tachycardia, flushing, and GI discomfort. And complex partial seizures when the patient is unconscious for one to three minutes. They might have some automatic unconscious actions called, called automatisms, um, like lip smacking, patting, or picking at their clothes, and this is followed by a postictal phase. During a seizure, the patient has no control over their motor activities, which can lead to accidents when the person is driving a car or handling heavy or dangerous equipment. Falls are common during a seizure. So the patient having a seizure is at risk for trauma and loss of motor control and could endanger other people as well. In addition to the confusion and incontinence, which is common during or after a seizure, um, we want to reduce the person's productivity, or sorry, seizures reduce the person's productivity and are embarrassing. 
use of the drugs we're going to talk about involves a balance between keeping a therapeutic level of the drug in the blood and avoiding the import, um, important side effects. So like I mentioned, we want to keep that airway open, establish IV access so we can give meds. If they're in bed, raise the, raise the bed rails and keep the bed low to the ground. If they're not in bed, help lower them to the floor. Remove anything that can cause an injury, turn them onto their side. With seizures, it's very important to document when it started and how long it lasted. It might be difficult to remember to watch the time when your patient's seizing, but it's important. If we know that there's a problem with seizures, we'll start anti-seizure drugs one at a time. If a drug doesn't work, we can increase the dose or try another. Usually more than one drug is necessary to control and eliminate seizures. When we're working with patient that has a seizure disorder, we need um, to complete their drug list with any patient, not just seizure disorder patients, right? We talk about that in every single chapter. This includes over-the-counter drugs and herbal medications too. Some anti-seizure medications interact with other drugs, especially Fentoin. It increases the effects of anticoagulants, so the person is at higher risk for bleeding. It also interacts with others. It's a very touchy drug. Um, we also need to know the nature of their seizures. We want to ask if they get an aura before, what the aura is. We also want to know their baseline level of consciousness and vital signs. After we give these meds, we want to recheck their level of consciousness and their vital signs. These drugs can make the patient dizzy or drowsy, so safety is a concern. We don't want these patients to drive. We also don't want them to drink alcohol because this can increase the drowsiness or dizziness. And monitor for seizure activity and be prepared to respond if they do have a seizure. We do things like patting the bed rails for safety, making sure the bed is in the lowest position and the colloids within reach. Teach your patient uh, to keep all of their appointments so we can con continue to monitor and control the seizures. And also to make sure that they get their lab work done so we can keep an eye on drug levels in the blood. We teach them all um, to take all of their meds exactly as prescribed because suddenly stopping can actually trigger a seizure. If they miss a dose, we want them to take it as soon as possible, but we don't want them to double up. So if it's twice a day and they miss the morning, um, we don't want them to take double that night. But if they realize, say, at like lunchtime that they missed the morning, then they can take it. <clears throat> we, want them, we want them to take these meds with food and to drink plenty of water and to avoid any grapefruit juice or grapefruit because it can increase the action of the drug and can lead to worse side and adverse effects. We want these patients to wear medical alert bracelets and to carry a card with them that states their diagnosis, their doctor's information, and what drugs are on as well. So first we have our narrow spectrum anti-epileptic drugs. Um, these are for partial and generalized seizures. The exact action isn't known, but they act on the brain and nervous system. They cause a decrease in the voltage, frequency, and spread of electrical impulses within the motor cortex of the brain, leading to decreased seizure activity. The common ones you'll see are carbamazepine, which is Tegretol, valproic acid, which is Depakote or Depakon, and Fentoin, which is Dilantin. Valproic acid increases the availability of the neurotransmitter GABA, which reduces the neuron excitability. Carbamazepine decreases impulse transmission by affecting, affecting the sodium channels in the neurons, and Fentoin changes ion transport. The intended response of all of these is to control seizures and prevent them and for abnormal in electrical impulses to be decreased. Um, side effects are ataxia, which is a loss of coordination or clumsiness, um, as well as dizziness, lightheadedness, and drowsiness. And adverse effects are allergic reactions, neutropenia, and aplastic anemia. Fentoin can cause GI symptoms like indigestion, nausea, and vomiting as well. Um, it can also cause double vision, which is called diplopia rapid involuntary movement of the eyes, which is called nystagmus, hypotension, excessive growth of gum, uh, gum tissue, which is called gingival hyperplasia, and excessive growth of hair in unusual places called um, hypertrichosis and rashes. Carbamazepine and fentoin can cause neutropenia and aplastic anemia. Carbamazepine can also cause thrombocytopenia, which is a low platelet count, which increases the person's risk for severe bleeding. So before I give these, I want to monitor their IV site for patency and make sure that any solutions I'm running are compatible. Um, I want to continuously monitor their gait or how they're walking, um, ask about nausea and vomiting, give with food if necessary, and watch for side effects. Um, teach my patients to have their lab tests done regularly, recommend that they drink plenty of water because these drugs will dry the mouth and increase urine excretion. Um, I want to make sure that they know that they're um, 
their birth control pills may not work, so they would need to use a second form of birth control. And again, to not sudden, suddenly stop taking these drugs because that can lead to a seizure. In our kids, we use fent uh, Fentoin carefully. Behavioral changes are more likely with carbamazepine, and adolescents might need increased doses because of their growth and hormone changes. Um, in pregnancy and lactation, we're really only going to use them if the benefits outweigh the risk to the fetus. Some infants have been born with low birth weight, small head sizes, skull or facial defects, underdeveloped fingernails, and delayed growth when mothers took large doses of these drugs during pregnancy. Um, valproic acid during pregnancy has been associated with developmental defects, low IQ, birth defects, congenital anomalies, and damage to the infant's liver. Um, our older adults are more sensitive to the effects. They may experience confusion, restlessness, nervousness, abnormal heart rhythms. Um, they might also experience chest pain. Um, I want to teach them to monitor their pulse at least twice a day and report any abnormalities to the prescriber. Um, that way, you know, they're, they're monitoring for those abnormal heart rhythms. Then our broad spectrum anti-epileptic drugs, these are effective in treating a variety of seizures. The intended response for broad spectrum anti-epileptic drugs is to prevent and control seizures, decrease abnormal electrical impulses, and increase the resistance of the central nervous system to abnormal stimuli. Ethosuximide um, or Xerontin depresses the motor cortex and increases the CNS threshold. The action of valproic acid or Depakote um, may be related to increased availability of GABA. Side effects include nausea and vomiting, indigestion, loss of appetite, and weight loss. Other side effects of these drugs are mental confusion, drowsiness, dizziness, headaches, constipation, depression, and nervousness. Adverse effects of ethosuximide include neutropenia, pancytopenia, and aplastic anemia. And for valproic acid include hepatotoxicity, pancreatitis, and bone marrow depression. Patients taking these drugs should notify their prescriber immediately about symptoms of allergic reaction like rashes, fever, sore throat. Um, Bone marrow depression can result in reduced production of red blood cells, which causes anemia, reduced white blood cells, which can result in infection, and reduced platelets, which can result in bleeding. And as I mentioned earlier, these meds can increase the effectiveness of anti or yeah, the effectiveness of anticoagulant meds. So we want to monitor their coagulation lab values, monitor their weight. We like to give these with food because they can cause so many GI disturbances. And the patient teaching we talked about, take the drugs exactly as prescribed with no double doses. Tell the patient to make sure um, a surgeon or dentist or any provider doing a procedure knows the patient's on the drug because of the increased risk of bleeding. Ethosuximide can make the eyes more sensitive to light, so teach them to wear dark glasses in bright light. In our kids, valproic acid, um, in kids younger than two is that puts them at an increased increased risk for liver damage that can even be deadly growing kids often need dose increases as well so obviously these would be guided by um by a provider, our valproic acid would not usually be used in, in young children. In pregnancy and lactation, risks with valproic acid, primidone and lamotrigine and clonazepam exist. Valproic acid during pregnancy has been associated with developmental defects, low IQ, birth defects, congenital anomalies, and damage to the infant's liver. They do pass into breast milk as well, so we would avoid these while breastfeeding. And our older adults, again, are more sensitive to the side effects, so we would use these cautiously. Then our second line are alternative drugs for seizures. We usually use these when another seizure, or with another seizure drug or when an anti-epileptic drug does not work. Um, some examples are phenobarbital, primidone, gabapentin, lamotrigine, clonazepam, and pregabalin. Um, but this puts these um, patients at more increased risk for side effects when we're you know, giving multiple medications. Um, the, some advantages and disadvantages, um, of these medications, again, more effective seizure control, but a disadvantage, of, a disadvantage, especially of phenobarbital, is that it can lead to physical dependence. Um, primidone is turned into phenobarbital by the body and acts the same way as phenobarbital. Um, second line drugs for seizures are often prescribed, again, with other seizure medications. So there's that increased risk for side effects. When seizure drugs are prescribed together, lower doses might be needed, though, so that's a plus. Um, there's lots of you know, life-threatening adverse effects with these as well. 
So before we give any of these medications, I want to make sure um, that any antacids are scheduled within at least two hours of other meds. This specifies gabapentin because that is a, a big um, reaction. It, the antacid decreases the effectiveness of gabapentin, but really antacids decrease the effectiveness of all oral medications. Um, Make sure we're asking about liver and kidney problems, and if it's IV, we're checking for patency and compatibility. We're always going to monitor for side effects and adverse effects. If a rash develops, we're going to hold the drug and again give these with food because they can upset the stomach. Um, teach the patient that the birth control may not work to avoid alcohol. Um, it can affect the protein in the urine in diabetics. Teach your patients to wear sunscreen or protective clothes and also to avoid um, smoking. In our kids, lamotrigine is um, gives a higher incidence of rash, and gabapentin can cause fever, hyperactivity, or hostile or aggressive behavior. So we're probably not going to give that to kids. Um, these are not tested in pregnant women, um, but women are more likely to experience dizziness when taking lamotrigine, and primidone can cause increased birth defects. And there have been reports of newborns with bleeding problems. Gabapentin has been associated with bone and kidney problems in pregnant animals, but has not been tested in women and in, in um, humans. In animal studies, newborns have been lower weight and have a lower survival rate. Um, they do pass through the breast milk. So the you know, big contraindication as far as pregnancy and um, lactation goes. Older adults are more sensitive to the effects. They can develop unusual restlessness or excitement with primidone. Lamotrigine and gabapentin are more slowly eliminated from an older adult's body. Um, and we need to know that older adults must are usually are started on a lower dose. And that is it for a short chapter on seizures.